I am in playing with the Beatle, and I'm most impressed that that was between Taylor and the final control they managed to identify it. It is the great demon beetle of uh, Juma. I say that it is the great demon beetle because it's got black demonic eyes, uh, long horns, and it is a form of long horn beetle. But isn't it amazing? Now, what I want to do is put it in front of the microscope for you, because I promise you, if you look into those eyes through the microscope, I think that you'll be terrified for weeks afterwards. I'm focused on your eyes. You're focusing on my eyes, are you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Not my eyes. My eyes are angelic. But the eyes of this chap, not so much. Isn't he wonderful? I wonder if he would like to hang around for television. He does, he's good at hanging, at any rate. All right, let's take him inside and put him onto the microscope. <laughs> Slightly like I've been possessed. <laughs> Sorry, let's take him inside. <laughs> He's been, you know what, he sat still for about 10 minutes while Taylor was looking at the hippos, and now, of course, he is becoming very mobile. Now, let's see if we can get him just to sit still long enough for us to make him look into the microscope. No, no, you're going to need to sit still. Sit still, sit still, please, just briefly. Just a few seconds. That's it. That's it. Uh, no. No. He's, <laughs> he's really not being very confiding. Stop now. Hang on. Let me put him on my stick. He stood on the stick. He managed to sit still on the stick for a little while. That's it. Where are you going? You see, you've got nowhere to go. Just sit there. Sit there. No, man. You are a seriously irksome creature. I'm sorry, everybody. He was really going... I was so looking forward to putting him under the microscope, but now he won't sit still. And although he looks a little bit like a sort of the demon beetle of Juma, He's completely harmless. See? Until he bites me, of course. He does, H. Macy. You say he looks like a giant stink bug, but he's not a bug. He's definitely a beetle. Uh, there's nothing bug-like about him. And so, although he looks buggish, he's not a bug and he won't make a smell. He's got quite a lot of armor on him. He's got two nice little spikes on the back, which would also be nice to look at under the microscope. But unfortunately, he's just doing his laps at the moment. Up and down the stick he's walking. <laughs> That's it. Come on, get tired. Uh, he sat literally for ten minutes. Not moving an inch. Now... He's moving. Lorena, you reckon his legs are massive? Yeah, they are quite big, but it's his, it's his antenna that are the most important part of the longhorn beetle, of course. That's what gives him his name. I'm not sure exactly which longhorn he is. We'll have to look that up. But that's what gives him his name. And if I was to capture him, if I was to grab him by his carapace and hold him up to my microphone, you would almost certainly hear him screaming. They make this high-pitched, plaintive, screaming sound. It's dreadful to listen to. But that's only if you capture them. So if they're under, in distress, you know whether they're in distress. This is very cool. Mary, you're wondering about the hearing abilities of insects. Uh, Mary, I don't know a huge amount about it. M many of them have got rudimentary ears. Some of them don't have ears at all. The grasshoppers and the cicadas, those sorts of insects, of course, and, and the crickets must be able to hear because that's how they call each other. That's, how that's what that stridulating is for. It's to help them to find mates. So their rudimentary ears will certainly pick up the, uh, the vibrations of danger, I suspect, 
and also, of course, the vibrations of or cr created by their potential mates. Now, something there are some species of moth, for example, that can hear the specific bats that like to eat them. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard try, or tried to hear a bat echolocating. It just sounds like a very high-pitched call from the sort of ether, and many bats will make ultrasonic sounds too high for us to hear, much too high pitched for us to hear. But there are species of moth and species of other insects that are able and have evolved to hear those frequencies so that they don't get eaten. So they can hear the bat trying to echolocate, they'll hear the ping from the bat, it'll go ping and it travels out, the moth will hear it, drop down, sort of, and apparently what they do is, it's quite amazing, they will, if the moth is flying along and it senses the ping of the bat's echolocation, it'll drop quickly. Now, some bats have learned to pick that up, and um, they will echolocate the moth. The moth will drop down slightly, faster than they can re-echolocate it, but they predict what the moth is going to do, and they'll grab the moth out of the air, having predicted from the ping and the species how to catch it. But the moths, of course, have evolved to drop out of the way of the pinging. So, yes, they can hear, absolutely. It's a really cool story, though, isn't it?